All Ireland final this Sunday, Dublin v Kerry. One we've all wanted to see for the last little while. Um, I know we met last year in the semi final, but what are your thoughts on maybe how are Kerry going to get over Dublin this weekend and, and, and where do you see maybe a weakness in this Dublin side? Yeah, thanks again. Good to see you. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the final. I suppose it's a little bit strange uh, for me coming in, but I'm looking forward to the whole occasion. Touching on the Dublin Kerry rivalry, obviously it's, it's one for the ages, it's one that every fan wants to see. Uh, we seen it in the semi final last year, there's only a point between the sides. But for you, what does Dublin Kerry mean? Ah, sure, it's the, it's the, it's the, from someone from Kerry, it's the pinnacle of the sport for us. Do you know a Kerry Dublin championship game, be it semi final or a final? Uh, I actually got last year in the parade, I don't remember an atmosphere like it, the yeah. smell of the flares, I don't know, was it kind of pent up from COVID or what was it like, but I just never remember an atmosphere like last year's semi final. Um, and you know, it's 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 the real like. If you really want to test yourself as a footballer, like, is can you do it against Dublin in Crow Park? You know, and I'm sure the Dubs are the same. Is can you can you do it against us? You'll be hoping. Uh, and it's it really is the 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 highest level. Um, you know, and like if you were to win an Ireland and and you beat Dublin along the way, it's 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 exactly what you would would you'd wish away for. You know, but it's obviously the hardest path. And uh, I just think you, you meet so many guys there like that. Uh, say the team that I came into, they would have all had you know the friends or whatever on the Dublin team. And like we grew up, and my dad like they'd all meet up with this team in the seventies and the eighties. Um, you know before the games, the weekend, and I'm sure it'd be the same. in you know every decade or whatever, uh, there seems to be a really good Dublin Kerry rivalry. Um, you know which is special from from both sides. I think. Yeah, I remember. I remember there was a there was a selector with Peter Caffrey's squad I remember at the time and he always used to harp on he's like well, what, you measure your career on how, on how you fared out against Dublin and Kerry and or against Kerry in, in in your respective games or whatever and that was that always kind of rang true to me and it was with with, with him it was with Len, uh, Mead and Leinster but for for us it was probably it was Kerry and Mayo coming down the stretch in in you know late September or whatever and that that. For me, the rivalry at Dublin and Kerry was you were always on top very early in my career. We could yeah. never beat you, no matter where the hell we went to. We could never beat you. And Pat Gilroy came in in 2009, and you probably don't remember. You probably don't remember this, but um, we went down and played you in one of the first league games in Killarney. And we, I mean, we trained for that. Like we trained hard for that. You'd won the All Ireland year previous, or maybe lost in the final. Was it? Yeah, you'd lost in the final to to Tyrone. And uh, so you were probably on your holiday limping back in for January train and blah, blah, blah. But we were ready for that game. And I think that was the, men like, mentally that changed our Dublin squad. We went down to Clarny and we beat us down there, which was, it was unheard of at the time. We, yeah. we met, maybe it's a little bit different now, but right back then it was, it was completely unheard of. And I think that was the making of our team. For, so the rivalry for me was being whipped earlier on in my, in, in my playing <laughs> days and learning, learning hard lessons, but... But that, that one in 2009, one that stood out for us was, it kind of made us believe that, you know, they're not unbeatable, you know, sort of way. So, um, mm. but yeah, just, just, just touching on Sunday then, um, and I know Jim, Jim Gavin would have some wise words leading up to the, leading up to a final like this, and we just stick to the process. Um, we've heard it a million times before, but what would Jack O'Connor be saying in, uh, in the lead up to this game this week? Yeah, I, look, I think it's so even. I think both sides will be trying to get the best out of their performance. They both feel that if they play to their potential, they'll win. Yeah. And it's about, you know, I don't think there's going to be incredible tactics in order to nullify the opposition. I think there'll be definitely man-marking jobs. I think there'll be definitely ways of playing. But I think Kerry and Dublin will both set up to try and play their best game, put their best foot forward. Uh, and it'll be about how to maximise, you know, I think they're going to try, both sides will probably try and get quick ball into the, the forwards. Like we said earlier, if Conor Callan is getting a quick ball on the turn with, you know, no, no double teams, it's going to be very hard to mark him. It's going to be the same on the other side. Uh, and it'll be a case of trying to win how many 50-50 balls can you get. You know, the kick out, I think, is going to be very important of whether you can secure your own kick out and get possession and get the, the ball up fast. Uh, but I think both both teams, or especially Jack, will be trying to say, okay, how do we maximise our performance? What do we need to do? We got to get play on our terms. Dublin haven't played Kerry in the league this year at all, and and you know Dublin have probably added a little bit to their squad. But do you see what 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 have Kerry added to the squad since last year? Like obviously it was a one point game, one point game or one point win for Kerry last year, but it was obviously minus Con, minus Jack. 
mm-hmm. minus you know minus Paul Mannion. So that coming in and bolstering the squad up a little bit for Dublin. Do you see them stronger this year than they were last year? Yeah, they boost up midfield big time. Anyway. They've, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I I actually thought even going back at that game, like I mean. I think a lot of it was kind of the history of the Kerry Dublin, like that we needed to get over the line with G. Like, I mean, if you take that, like 10 minutes into the second half, we were six points up having beaten the penalty, having missed the penalty. I thought that we should have been further ahead and maybe the game, you know, and then obviously the mistake and, and, and Karma Costa gets a great goal and it's coming back into a dogfight and we win at the end. I have my own opinion on this, um, but where do you see where Kerry are going to get at this Dublin team? And don't yeah. just say David Clifford. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I, if I was to pick something, I just think that they've probably used maybe seven backs in the last... Like, I know you could, you know, you're interchanging, like, say, the Brian Howards and the James McCarthy's and stuff, but <clears throat> I just think that if one of your inside line went down injured or whatever early and obviously you have Jack McCaffrey coming in or whatever and stuff I just think that you don't have compared to the forwards you have the strength and depth that if you did pick up an injury or a, an early sending off or something like that happened I think you're quite uh, you're certainly not as heavily stocked as you were at the past you know like have you really replaced it to Johnny Cooper you know from last year I think that's something that if you're a Dublin fan you're saying geez I hope that you know my, our six backs stay injury free and stay on the field free and we have any the any change we have to make is has to be tactical. Just touching on David Clifford, like what makes the measure of this dude? Like like I don't I don't see him week in week out. You've obviously trained with the guy. Like what makes him so special? Like he just takes he takes in every box. You know what I mean? He's very athletic. He's He's a midfielder in terms of yeah. size and stuff, but he's very quick. And then he has, you know, he has magic then that, <clears throat> that, that you just see every so often. But I think his biggest attribute is like all the guys at the very, very top level is he's upstairs. He's yeah. plenty of aggression, but he's very level-headed. He's a real work ethic. He's a good teammate. Um, he's just a really good guy to be around. And he's, you know, I think, you know, the majority of the guys that you come across who are really, really special you know, as good as they are physically, it's mainly their mental, you know, they're probably a second ahead of everyone, but they're good to be around, to bring people in, you know, they don't make the same mistakes. Uh, that for me is a guy, and Shawnee's the same, Shawnee's a guy, he died for you, die for him, you know, it's, 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 it's very, very special, you know, that kind of mentality, uh, which I'm sure that you'd see, and I'm sure the James McCarthy's and the Brian Fenton's and all that, they probably have all, all the same where you're saying, you know, they can do all these things, but geez, they never make mistakes or they're, you know, they just seem to be a second ahead and they're just, um, you know, under teeth tough. Like, there's no yeah. rough in these guys, like, you know. Who would you like Dublin to put on David Clifford? Well, more, more to that point, I think, is, is, is Shawnee Clifford and, and Paddy Clifford, or Shawnee O'Shea and, uh, and Paddy Clifford. I think, they're, I think they're more important, and you touched on the point of starving David Clifford of ball coming in early inside to them guys, and I think... If Shawnee O'Shea and Paddy Clifford can get on ball early around, you know, the middle third and dictate the, the pace of the play and also dictate that ball going into the, the inside line, I think Kerry could have a real, real, a, a real, real uh, uh, shoot out here on, on Sunday. But, he, like, who, who would you not like to see Dublin put on David Clifford? And, and how, would you, how, would you, how would you like Dublin to kind of set up in, in that system, I suppose? Yeah, look, it's... it's I... I if if Paddy, Paddy Clifford obviously is an exceptional foot passer and Shawnee, if they got enough ball, it, it like we said at the start, it's very hard to know who's going to start. I would have thought they might put Owen Merchant maybe on Paddy and let him track out around the field and be whether that's something to do. On David, you probably know this more than me, I would have thought it would be Fitzsimons or maybe Davy Byrne or else it might be a McMahon if they're going to do a flyer. Do you know something? Like he seems to be very athletic. He's strong. Do you know he's kind of done that role before? Um... He's a someone I thought maybe if they were going to do someone, you know, from out of nowhere to try and surprise it, would he be an option? You probably noticed more than me. You'd have seen a lot more in him. Um, and then I think that it's you know John Small has historically kind of married Shawnee, um, and then it's a case of you know depending on you know whether it's a Stephen O'Brien or an Adrian Spillane, what, what Dublin are going to do there. I think. Um, who do you think that Dublin put on him? Well, people are talking about here that. James McCarthy's going to go back and, and mark David Clifford. And, and if that ever happens, I think Dublin may as well just throw their hat at it because they, James McCarthy, first of all, is not a full-back or a cornerback man marker ever in his career, ever, ever. And I think, obviously, if you take James McCarthy out of that midfield, he's the engine room. He's the guy that's driving the forwards. Like, 
against Monaghan in uh, the 74th minute, he was still cutting hard lines, and lads could not keep up with him. He was absolutely unbelievable in that game. But um, yeah, I, th- I think you're right. I think I think probably Fitzy or Davy Byrne will, will pick up Clifford inside. But if they can starve the ball, and I think Lee Gannon's a huge player for Dublin. Uh, people might not, not not see this, but I see this week in week out. He's doing a tremendous amount of work, just making making runs forward and and making the, the forward chase him down the field. Because when that happens, they're not setting their position, and they're also probably out of breath when they do get into the into the into the play as well. When they when when the opposition have the ball, so I think Lee Gannon's going to be a huge player for Dublin in this game, whether it be a man marking role or whether it be taking the the eye off the ball and trying to cut in uh, on the blind side maybe or something like that. But Sean O'Shea and John Small will be certainly a matchup for the ages. I can imagine yeah. there'd be, be nothing given or taken there, I can imagine. But uh, yeah, it, it, it's a key one for me. I think if, if they can get Paddy Clifford and Sean O'Shea starve the ball out, so out, out the field, I think they not have a great platform to go ahead with that one. Though. Yeah, I'd agree. I think that it'd be a huge plus for Kerry if, if James McCarthy went full back. Just I think it takes so much from him around the middle. I think himself and Brian Fenton midfield is a very, very strong platform to build off. Um, you know, and I just think that that I think it would be good for Kerry because I know like James McCarthy's often went back and marked big guys or whatever, but David is very agile on the on the ground as well. It's not it's not a like for like like Mark and you know, a big the old stereotypical full forward is a little bit different to that. I've obviously retired from the game a couple of years, but and you you're a little bit you know, you you just stepped away last year. Um, firstly, do you miss it at all? And uh, maybe, you know, seeing Kerry doing so well, were you tempted to come back? Or was was anyone in your ear to maybe come back and, and give another season to this Kerry camp? Or how are you feeling now that Kerry are in the final? Um, I, I think the fact, that the, the, the fact that we had such a good club run after, or, you know, after Kerry finished last year, I was really kind of ingrained in the club, is, is in training every, you know, we get the split season, you win every night. And then I kind of naturally ran into the start of this uh, start of this campaign. That definitely has helped in terms of retirement because you often hear people like say, if I retired because of bad injury, you miss the camaraderie, the train, and the crack, all that. I still have that, you know, with with the club. Uh, I suppose when I was sitting down start of the year, I had to presume the career were going to win the Ireland just because you're that was what you're there every year to do, and mm-hmm. you're kind of saying, look, how am I going to feel, you know, if Dave Clifford's going up the steps, you know, in September or in in July. Um, but I suppose for me, it wasn't 100% a football decision. We were busy, you know, I was keen with CSG. Things were, you know, really evolving work-wise. We had a second kid in, in uh, February. Um, and then at my age and last year, I had been very lucky. I got a good run with injuries, which hadn't happened for a lot of my career. And I just kind of said, am I, at this age, am I literally going to be keep everything going? And I just felt that I wouldn't be able to do everything at work, everything at home, everything in football and try and make a difference. And I just, something I had to give. You know, so it, if it was just a football decision, I said, look, I just can't, I can't uh, contribute here. It might have been harder because I'd be saying, geez, if I was, would I have been wrong? What if I had done everything? I just, I just felt I couldn't do everything at this stage of my life, in my career. It probably wasn't fair to Sinead and the lads at home or guys in work that, um, you know, that I was going to continue to prioritise uh, football, you know, and be it, they would have been very supportive if I stayed on for another year, but you can't do everything. Yeah, that's 100%. And it was, it was a, it was similar in my uh, in my instance as well. Like it, it just everything everything else kind of gets bigger and yeah. and it demands more time and whatnot. And and then you have to kind of revisit. Have I done enough here? Is it is it all worth it kind of thing? You know, sort of way. But um, you obviously grew up in a household where your dad was the the main man, and um, he'd won eight eight all or was eight all Ireland's and played every minute of the final. Yeah, he'd be like a nervous man this weekend. He's a very nervous <laughs> man this weekend. <laughs> well, just grow, growing up in that environment, I'd imagine you were around a lot of the Kerry players and around that Kerry squad, kind of as a young kid or whatever. Like, was that always your ambition to play for Kerry? And who, who would you maybe have looked up to on them great Kerry teams that your dad was involved in? Yeah, like, so, like we would have obviously he'd have been very close to Bomber. They were the same club, Barry Bunyan. Like he'd have been in the house, you know, and. It's funny, and Tommy, Tommy Walsh is that Shawnee, we were all been you know, knocking around together, and like we would have never seen Bomber come in as the, you know, the Bomber list, and we would yeah, all yeah. you know, he'd be just be the life and soul of the place. Um, you know, so we would have been growing up in that environment, we would always want to, uh, you know, to emulate them. They all, all their team would always be preaching that Jack O'Shea was the best 
they'd ever seen, you know, so we were always trying to be Jack O'Shea or whatever. Um, and then I suppose as uh, as time went on, uh, we were playing, say I was playing underage with, with the two Walshes, Barry John and Tommy and my brother, uh, and Barman's son was playing, we were all on the same club teams and stuff, so we all kind of came up together, I suppose we all always wanted to, to make the Kerry Minor team first, I suppose, because my brother would have been the, the first of our group to play Kerry Minor, and then we all wanted to be you know, to follow suit and, and hopefully play. So, uh, yeah, it was always, I, I, my dad managed Kerry from 93 to 95. So I probably, I don't have any memories from him playing bar, maybe a little bit of the club, but I've very good memories of, you know, going in around when Kerry, uh, the Kerry training over at Fitzgerald Stadium or whatever, just, you know, kicking the balls back out, uh, to that team, which was, you know, lovely memories to have. Yeah, deadly, deadly, deadly. And, I have an out here now. You, you were described uh, as the man who carried the kick pa pass and torch, just like myself, I suppose. Um, and it, it, like watching you and, and David, that was probably your biggest strength. I know you're a big athletic man. You're good at fielding the ball, but we, when we ever played, just, it was always we need to do, we need to get on you very early in the game, or very early when you had possession of the ball, and not let you get your go up and get kick passes off. But was that always a was that always a thing that you practiced? Because you, you were brilliant off both feet, and that 40 or 50 yard kick pass with a one bounce inside used to murder us. <laughs> but is, it, is, is that something that would like just came naturally to you, or is it something that you really worked on throughout your playing day? Yeah, I suppose we were we were football mad at home. Yeah. You know, so we were down every evening. We were kicking down the club field. Any excuse at all we could to get out of school and or you know to to be so. We were in morning unite, so I suppose that was advantage. The fact that I wasn't blessed with Gavin White's pace either, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I needed to be a better kicker because I wasn't going to be able to run it. Yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> so that was probably another factor why I needed to concentrate on kicking it. Um, yeah, look, it was it was something that that I needed to have right because it was a strength in my game. Um, you know, and I suppose earlier in my career I probably suffered a little bit because of it and because. I was probably trying passes that weren't on being young and you know all that kind of stuff um, and I think that I probably gave away too much possession earlier in my career uh, and I think then you probably lose, not you would lose any ambition but you, you gain a bit smarter from making mistakes that are punished and I suppose my kick in probably the end of my career was a lot better even though it wasn't as you know over eight, you know it wasn't as long or whatever I was trying to keep it more simple and it probably stood me in good stead.